Hello all, this is Daniel Berman, USCF Expert 2131, and today I'm going to go over a game I played in 2002 against Richard Henderson, and in this game I'm white, and I was rated around 2180, and Richard Henderson was rated about 2000, and the game is a Petrov queen trade variation. So let's begin. Um, I played e4, played e5, knight f3, knight f6, knight takes e5, d6, knight f3, and knight takes e4. And this is all the normal Petrov. And normally, um, white will play d4, and black will play d5. But in this game, in this position, I played my pet line, which is queen to e2, simply trying to win the knight because I'm pinning the knight against the king. And he has four ways to defend. He could defend with um, d5 or f5 or bishop f5 or queen e7. Now the problem with uh, d5 and f5 and bishop f5 is I can play d3 and I'll win the knight. So his only move in this position is queen to e7. And I continued d3, knight to f6, bishop to g5, knight bd7, knight c3, queen takes e2, and bishop 8 takes e2. And this is book, and um, after this move, the position is considered equal. Um, black's already equalized. However, I'm very familiar with this position. I played it for years, and I still like the endings that I get for white. That's why I continue to play it. I have a pretty high score, and I continued. Castle, Bishop E7, Rick H E1, Castle, D4, and D5. And I play bishop to d3, bishop d6, h3, h6, and here I retreat my bishop to d2. If I go bishop to h4, he could play g5, bishop to g3, and then bishop takes bishop, doubling my uh, g pawns, and he can have a permanent uh, post for his knight on e4 later in the um game, so I didn't want to go for that, so I played it back to bishop to d2, and my opponent played b5. Now, this is his first weakness in the game. He weakened uh, c6, no, no, no pawns can defend c6, and if the queens were on the board, this would be a fine move. He would start uh, a pawn storm on my king side, and uh, use his uh, queen and pieces to attack my king. However, in an ending, um, it's just making a weakness, and, and I try to exploit it. So I continue. Knight e5, b4, and knight takes d7. And here, if he goes pawn takes knight, I have knight takes knight check, followed by bishop takes c3, and I'll win a pawn. So he has to recapture with knight takes d7. And I play knight e2, and now I have a, a second weakness, which is the b-pawn, only defended by the bishop. So he plays a5, and I play bishop f4 here. Now, in addition to um, uh, making weaknesses, another thing that I'm taking advantage of is trading off my bad pieces for his good pieces. My bishop is a bad piece because my pawn on d4 is black and it's the same color as my bishop. And his bishop's a good bishop because his pawn on d5 is white. So he plays bishop, takes bishop check. I recapture. And here he does the same thing. He trades his bad bishop for my good bishop. And instead of me taking and uh, giving him a tempo, I let him uh, have to move his bishop twice. I just play rook e7, knight f6, and now um, I play bishop takes bishop, rook takes bishop. So let's take a look at this position. I have a rook on the seventh. I um, have a knight on f4, which can jump to 
um, d3 and e5 or c5 and his knight on f6 can go to e4 but I can kick it with f3 so I believe I am um, I have a, a, a big plus in the position and here's how I continue rook d e1 a4 and again he's attacking me with his pawns like he had a queen and um, he doesn't. So what he's doing is he's basically making weaknesses. He, in a position like this in an ending, you should not move your pawns. You should get your pieces activated, your king centralized, and he's just moving pawns. And here is another theme, another chess principle. Deny your opponent from what they want to do. So I played knight to, uh, pawn to f3, not allowing his knight to um, come into my position. And here he plays b3, and I suppose I could trade and win a pawn However, um, he would uh, double his rooks on the b-file and have a lot of pressure on my b-pawn, giving him play. So instead of giving him any play, I just decide not to. I just push past, and he plays b, takes c2, king takes c2, rook to b8, and now he wants to double his rooks on the b-file to get into my position. And I deny it. Again, that same principle, denying him from what he wants to do. So I play knight to d3. And if you were to go rook b6 right now, rook a b6, I'd just go knight to b4, stopping him from uh, attacking um, b2. Here he goes uh, king f8, and I play knight b4, rook a b6, and he has no other square. So I continue rook a7, and I win a pawn. And there's no way he can defend that now. So he plays rook c b7. And instead of taking the pawn on a4, I go rook to a5. Um, and my idea is, um, I guess I'm trying to keep control on c5, and I have plenty of time to take the a pawn. He goes rook c8. Now I go knight d3, and I'm about to jump into some really nice squares. He goes knight d7, and now I go rook takes a4, knight b6, and instead of moving my rook, I counterattack him, knight c5, and rook e7, rook take e7 is forced, king takes e7, rook a7 check, I'm back on the 7th rank, king f6, b3, denying the knight entry into my squares again, rook e8, and king d2, denying the rook entry into my squares, and he goes knight c8, and here uh, my opponent uh, resigned, he was actually low on time, and he was down a pawn, and it was pretty clear that after rook a8, my a pawn is going to run, and there was nothing he can do to uh, avoid a trade of another pair of pieces, so uh, um, he called it a day. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.